Hello YouTube, welcome back to my Learn the Mad Dog video series. Today we're going to talk about anti-icing systems. Alright, so the aircraft's powered up. We're running on the APU. We are at Port Columbus International, now called John, John Glenn International in Columbus, Ohio. And today we're going to talk about icing. Alright, real quick. So, this is not going to be another short one. We got the APU going. Here are your anti-icing systems. This is all you need to be concerned about. Airfoil. What this does is, this turns on anti-icing for the wings. All right, those are your airfoils. Anti-ice for the wings is powered by bleed air from the engines. The engines are not running, so obviously this isn't working right now. Now what that does is that keeps ice from accumulating along the leading edge of the wings left and right you have to have hot bleed air coming from the engines for this to work this is your windshield anti-ice and anti-fog you turn these on to make sure that the windscreen doesn't fog up during operations tail anti-ice this powers up the anti-ice for your stabilizer that's this little bad boy right here to make sure ice does not accumulate on the surface of the rear stabilizer. Again, that comes from bleed air from the engines. This is your engine anti-ice. This keeps ice off the EPR probes and other critical areas in the engine. Your engine anti-ice, various parts of the engine that needs to be anti-ice is powered by high pressure bleed air coming from the engines. Okay, I don't recall what the procedures are for taking off with engine anti-ice. I do know that anti-ice or the uh, when you turn on engine when you turn on engine anti-ice or airfoil anti-ice is taking bleed air from the engine, so you actually reduce power from the engines when you turn these on so I'm not sure you want to turn these on before you take off and last but not least we all know that airplanes have a bunch of tiny little probes sticking out from them Let's see if I can see them uh, that's it right there that's your angle of attack thingy there's one right there there's another one right there there's a whole bunch of probes sticking out of the fuselage and those probes or ram probes they take all sorts of measurements uh, barometric pressure airspeed uh, change in altitude when your vertical speed it does a whole bunch of stuff well it's very very easy for those probes to get iced over if you're flying in icing conditions this right here once you turn it to any setting other than off energizes all those probes all right once it goes from off to any of these settings, all those probes get hot. If you're supposed to touch them once they turn on, it burn the hell out of you. And what this does, it simply shows how much current each one of these probes are drawing. That's all it does. These are the various probes that's sticking, that are sticking out of the aircraft. And this switch simply tells you how much power each of those probes is drawing. But once you turn it from the off position, they're all energized. Uh, given the fact that they can burn you on the ground, I'm not sure what the reasoning is, but on the ground, these probes do not work. All right? Last but not least, and that's it for the anti-icing, I guess we can talk about the wiper. You can park your blade. It's a spring-loaded switch. Use your scroll wheel. Believe it or not, that's slow. And it's not clearing the entire windscreen it is on the inside but not on the outside and that's slow that's fast and that turns it off and that parks it and that's all I have to say about the anti-icing system just one more thing and this is the most important thing the Mad Dog MD-82 from Leonardo simulates icing up the wazoo, okay? 
if you're in flying in icing conditions it's gonna ice up on you wherever it can based on how it does in the real world all right so and icing is one of those things where it's more effective as a preventative measure you don't want to wait until you see you've accumulated icing before you turn on your anti-ice so you see a big cloud coming up or you're descending from cruise altitude and there's a base of clouds and you're in the higher uh, elevate the higher uh, latitudes of the country if you're flying into clouds you want to turn on your icing system don't wait turn this on turn on the airfoil turn on your uh, all your icing systems not just one or two it's all or nothing turn them all on okay the moment you're out of an icing situation you're broken through the clouds Everything is nice and clear. You can go ahead and turn them back off. Obviously, that depends on the situation you're in. Flying around uh, in the Midwest in the springtime, above five, six, seven thousand feet, just to be safe, turn them on. Okay. Once this aircraft starts icing up, it's gonna behave as such. You're gonna lose your airspeed. Your ver your v your vertical speed is gonna get stuck. Your FMS is gonna freak out. You know what the hell's going on? I'm not getting any readings here. And God forbid if ice builds up on the wings, you're just going to stall and fall out of the sky. Uh, if you do have ice on the wings or on the surfaces, what icing does is it increases the stall speed. One last thing about icing, and this was a, came as a surprise to me. It's springtime here in Ohio. Occasionally, it still gets down in the freezing. So when you wake up in the morning, there's a thin layer of frost on your car. That thin layer of frost on the wings of an aircraft can reduce lift by up to 25 percent easily and that's why it's very important to make sure you don't have any ice on the airframes before you get into operations and that's all i have to say about that my name is flight sim guy hope you found this video on anti-icing systems useful thank you very much for watching i'll see you next time